Hey, it's Petey here. I'm uh, in another area right now, and I wanted to talk about powering, uh, in this case, a camcorder, and not using the tiny little battery packs that they sell. They're kind of expensive. Uh, another thing that I'll show you here is my, my this is my guitar strap, and it's got a with uh, nickel metal hydride, a NIM, uh, 9.6 volt pack in that, and that uh, runs my sustainer guitar. The sustainer has a reputation of eating up batteries in a half hour, a 9 volt battery will be dead. And I know people say, rechargeables. Well, this is rechargeable. And if you look at it, it's uh, quite a bit larger than a 9 volt. It's a lot of 9 volts in there. So, yeah. I can leave my sustainer on uh, all night and not worry about it. Uh, and it uh, plugs into a little charger here. It's 2.1 mil DC, so I hacked the charger. Uh, basically, you know, I soldered onto the sides of where the battery ports, uh, plus and minus, were just on the side. So soldered some heavier gauge wire onto that. And then there's a fuse that lives in here too, uh, just in case. So, uh, in any event, I like to try to not be throwing away a lot of small cells or going, uh, in my case, to the dollar store and buying a lot of batteries. And with the camcorder, um, a lot of the newer stuff is down to 5 volts. So if you want to power stuff, there's one way to do it is make your own cable system. These are wonderful. This is an auto charger and this is going to bust down a 12 volt to 5 volts. And now what you're going to want to look for is this has two ports. One is 1 amp and one is 2.1 amp. These goes as, uh, as high as 2.4 amps. And the thing with these is, uh, depending on your device, you really need to look up the current draw. Uh, now, if, if you can't determine the current draw or if the manufacturer is being a weenie and they've hidden that information from you, you can use a multimeter. And how you do a current draw test is you need to have the unit and a power supply and a cable that you can cut. So you will move your, usually on most meters you got to move over to this side to do the uh, test and what you'll do is you'll hook up a battery to the unit and then you'll cut one of the wires, let's say it's the negative wire, you'll cut one of the negative wires and then on one side you'll put one lead and on the other side you'll put the other lead and it'll power through your meter and the meter will display to you the milliamps, the amount of current that this device is actually draining. And this is helpful, like with guitar pedals, the older ones, the fuzzes, they could be as low as something like 16, 20, 30 milliamps, uh, 80 milliamps would be a common pedal draw. And then you're talking about newer stuff, or if it's got a chip in it, a digital type chip. If it's a time-based effect, such as a digital delay, or a chorus or flanger, or a multi-effect, we're going to draw quite a bit more current, even upwards of uh, one amp, which with milliamps, 1,000 milliamps is one amp. So this 5-volt charger that I showed you, oh, beat it. Oh, cry, cry, baby. Mommy and Daddy is making movies. I know you want to be in the movie. The next one. So the, uh, the idea with this here is, uh, this is a sealed lead acid battery. These are wonderful. And you can get these uh, recycled through the uh, AT&T, Yahoo, Belkin box. This is a Belkin box. People cancel their service with AT&T. Uh, that would be like your phone, internet, and TV through AT&T, and they cancel that. And then they take this box. Take that to the poor people at Goodwill. They, maybe those poor people can do something with it. And then you pull this battery out of here. Or you can buy them. They're about 20 bucks shipped. Uh, 17 And so this is a wonderfully powerful battery. And the idea here is that this battery would go in this bag, lunch bag. And then this box here has a heat, large heat sink. And then there is what's called a 7805. And then there's a couple of capacitors down there. How this works is we have our, there's a hole in here, there's a hole somewhere, where, yeah, the, the this box sits up in here, 
and the cable can get through to here, it plugs into that 12 volt battery. And then here is a fuse just in case, don't want to start a fire. And then I think it's like a one amp fuse or 750 milliamp. You know what, it would probably be a two amp fuse, wouldn't it? Uh, so this power switch just supplies power to the voltage regulator. And then here's a 2.1 mil DC jack. So the idea is I have taken a uh, connector that will fit into my camcorder and soldered it onto this plug here. Oh, <laughs> I thought this was a 2.1 mil. Soldered it onto a 2.1 mil that fits in here. So the 12 volts comes into this box. The 7805, in this case, drops the 12 volts down to 5 volts. Those two capacitors act as filters to make sure we got clean power. And then out comes the nine stable clean volts and into the camcorder's uh, DC power jack. So this little bag here, we can bring this with us. It's a night, got a nice uh, appearance, and it doesn't look like you'd have something uh, dangerous. You know, that's one thing. Like if you go, if you have this in a cardboard box with wires and tape all over that, and you bring that to your kid's graduation, people might think you have a bomb, or they might just freak out about contraptions, because uh, people are weird about this type of stuff. So if you have a nice looking type of case, this, like I said, this sits upstairs. There's a hole somewhere. I've got all this extra foam in here. Uh, it's but it's set up to be a comfortable case to carry. And then you have your wire tucked away on this top case here. Pull, pull the wire out, and if you had a monopod, you could put your camera on there and there, you know, bring it to a show, outdoor concert type of thing like that. So today I, wa I just wanted to share that with you. This is how we, uh, my channel, I do uh, remote music days, and we have a tripod with a camera on it. And this is how we're getting away with filming all day without... I mean, you could just as well go and buy, like, uh, five lithium-ion power packs for the camera. They're about $35 new. So you could do that, or you could enjoy a little hobby time like I've done. And I'll show you, this is another box that I had built uh, at the same time that I had put the white one together that I showed you. Um, so they're both 7805s, and I just, I didn't, I wanted to have a backup um, you can see the little board with the capacitors on it there. I wanted to have a backup, so I built this one. And, uh, gee, with all that high-gauge wire, it sure takes up a lot of room to just have a fuse, a switch, and then the capacitor board. It looks like I used a poly cap and an electrolytic. It's probably a, oh, let's see, a 10 microfarad and a 100 microfarad electrolytic. And so basically how these voltage regulators look, they have a screw hole on them because they dissipate heat. So this here, uh, this is drilled out for air to pass through it, and I put it together with some standoffs. And then this chunk of aluminum is a heat sink I removed from a computer power supply and snapped off the mounting brackets on the bottom. And then it's already threaded out. So when, uh, when this is running, when this is all put together, there's a little screw that fastens, what did I do with the screw? There's a pad, they have a little insulative pad, can't forget that. And then this will go on here and I'll thread this screw through here to hold it in place. And then the heat, it's generated all back on this plate here, will dissipate through here and ultimately rise through the cooling holes. So this is the little box with the 2.1 mil DC output. It's got a power switch, up is on with the fuse, and that's how we power our camcorder. Now, we had a camcorder that ran on five volts. Now we've upgraded. This new camcorder runs on nine. So what am I gonna do? Well, I've got a 7809 voltage regulator. They cost about 13 cents for these and that drops the 12 down to 9. Now the interesting thing about these voltage regulators is um, 12 volts down to 5, that's 7 volts. 12 volts down to 9, that's what, 3? So it's less work to do for the voltage regulator. So that, that's a big word, regulator. So that should um, be less work and it should be less wasted, wasted energy. My camera person is making faces at me. 
So that would be less wasted power because when we have heat, we have energy that is wasted. I mean, let's face it, I'm not building a space heater for crickets. I'm building a battery pack. And if it's getting hot, that means we're, that heat is wasted energy that's coming from our battery. So 12 down to 9, a 3 volt drop, that's really just about ideal. There's a two, usually a 2 volt surplus, meaning if it's a 5 volt voltage regulator and you slam it with 6.5 volts, nothing is going to come out. It won't function. You need at least 7 volts, meaning a 2 volt surplus above the output power, how it's rated, for the device to function. So uh, taking a look at the schematic you would say it is in this case <laughs> I don't know what's going on here with the color of the wires why it is the way it is uh, this is the input here oh wait is it is this a different one I'm gonna have to actually get the data sheet or do some poking around before I modify this because I would think how I designed this black would be the ground Yellow would be the input and red would be the output. But the way that typically the 7809A 